Hey, what is going on everybody? Back with another video and today I put together a new PC build. So this PC is only going to cost us 300 bucks. So let's get right into the video. So we're going to get right into this with the juicy stuff. So for the CPU, I went with the G4560. And for those of you who do not know, uh, this is the successor to the Pentium G3258 from last generation. And that was an excellent budget CPU. But this one makes the cake. It tops last uh, models by a lot. Now this CPU is almost on par with the i3 variant for $120. And this one's only 60 bucks right now. I mean, it's literally like 5 FPS off. You can't beat it. The CPU is a monster for the price and they just keep getting cheaper. So however there is one downside to the decreasing prices in CPUs and that is the motherboards got more expensive for some reason. This time you can pick one up for around $60 instead of the usual $40. I don't know why that is. And last generation's motherboards they do work with the new um, series however they will need an update so right out of the box you're going to be screwed if you try to buy an older motherboard for around $40. I already looked into it, so unfortunately we have to spend around 60 so we got a budget ASRock motherboard here, it supports 32 gigs of RAM, the usual, no bells and whistles, it'll hold everything we need, it's nothing pretty, it's far from it, but it's worth it, 60 bucks, can't beat it. So this build was really tight on the budget, so for the RAM we had to skimp out a little bit, but we still got an 8GB stick of 2133 MHz RAM, and however there is no heatsink, it's just plain old garbage looking RAM. So this build really isn't going to be pretty, but you're going to be playing Destiny 2 at 60 FPS, as well as any other game that's out on the market right now for 300 bucks, so you really can't beat it. So things start to really get interesting here. Now there's going to be some controversy over this, so I went with a 2GB uh, Asus RX 460. Now this was $90, and I know that the 1050 is a lot better than the 460 for almost the same price. However, for this budget, I literally could not fit in the extra $10, it would just put me over. So if you do have an extra $10 or $15, it is a most definite option to get the 1050 instead. It is a way better card for almost the same price. But for this budget, the 460 had to pick it. There was, I tried making cuts elsewhere, I couldn't do it. And besides, it's still going to play games at 60 FPS. My friends have this card. It's an excellent budget card. It's just the 1050 is the better option if you can throw the extra $10, which is a no-brainer. So sadly, we had to make some sacrifices there. For this build, the budget was so tight, I really focused on fitting in that 4560 CPU because it was just really difficult to otherwise. So we really had to make cutbacks everywhere else on the build, but the CPU was just that good. I felt it was worth it. Instead of investing in a higher graphics card and a lower tier CPU, it would just be better to get this CPU because of where it's at in the market and for the price, it is unbeatable. So because of that, we had to again, again sacrifice on the power supply. Now it's nothing too bad, but it's an EVGA 400 watt. And for these parts, you don't need anything crazy. The 400 watt is going to do just fine. But if you plan on throwing in, say, a 480 or a, I don't know, any upcoming AMD um, graphics cards, you definitely want a better um, power supply, but this is all open to interpretation, so whatever you're going to need, that's what you should buy. I mean, it's only $10 more for a 500 watt. I would go that route, but strictly for the budget, we have to go with the 400 watt for like 30 bucks. So it's still a deal, it's a good power supply, and I have nothing else more to say about it. And now for the hard drive, my good old friend, the Western Digital Blue Caviar series. Uh, we want the 320 gigabyte variant for this build. You could get a larger size, it was just $15 more for the 500 gigabyte. And 15 bucks is a lot of money for the $300 budget, so we just went with a 320 gigabyte instead. But again, that's up to interpretation, ah, interpretation, and you can get any one that you want. I would probably go with the one terabyte, I would stretch it another $20. But for the strict budget users out there, 320 gigabytes fine, it's gonna hold a couple games. Not a lot, but if you only play a couple games, this one's fine. If you're only going to play Destiny 2 and another game or CSGO, something like that, get the 320GB, it'll do you just fine. It's nothing crazy, but it'll get the job done. And it's like $22 right now. $22 for a hard drive? That's a steal. Go with it. Nothing bad to say about it. Been using these hard drives for a long time. So lastly, to wrap this up, 
I went with the Xeon case, which I've showed before. And there's two sizes, they're a dollar apart. So if you want the micro ATX size, go with this one. And if you want the full ATX size, go with that one. They're literally a dollar apart. And these cases, they give me a hard on every time I look at them. They just make me ejaculate all over the place in my pants. No, but seriously, these cases are really good. They're seriously only 23 bucks. And how can you beat that for a case? The reviews are like four stars out of five. The build quality isn't the greatest, but you're holding a budget PC. You're not holding freaking diamonds. And I've seen them. I have no people who have them. They have a nice blue LED fan and they're all black. They're very sleek looking. And overall, 23 bucks. I couldn't imagine paying that three years ago for a case. My budget cases like the Rosewill that I have laying around, nothing in comparison to the Xeon. I just prefer the rose wheel because it's smaller. This case is excellent, especially for gamers with the blue LED fan. It looks great and it will hold everything we need. No special functions. The build quality, like I said, isn't the greatest, but it's going to get the job done. And I was really happy with how it worked out with this build. And that about wraps it up for this build. I was really happy with this build. You're going to be playing Destiny 2, like I said, at 60 FPS. So if you enjoyed, I would really appreciate a like and a comment. I'm slowly growing. We're at 200 subs now. And I appreciate everyone who actually watches this show because I spend a lot of time making these videos and I get like 50 views, but that's okay. I don't give a shit anyway. It's still fun to do. So leave a like, drop a comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching. Signing out. Yeah.